Welcome to Sean and Carter Have a Podcast. My name is Sean. And my name is Carter. Your name is Carter slash Buzzy. Buzz the, the buzzy person buzz. I'm a bee. Carter's buzzing. I'm buzzing. And no matter how much troubleshooting Sean. is involved, it just uh, won't go away. Sean, just, just, just be quiet for like five seconds. Okay, people, what is that noise? <laughs> so, we've been doing this podcast for uh, a long time now. Uh, three two months. months. Two months? More than two months. Almost three. Almost three. And uh, we've never had this buzzing before. I have a new computer, but that could be coincidental. I don't want to... You don't want to blame the computer. Like, you don't want to throw it in a corner and it's like, I didn't do anything! Nobody put... ThinkPad E420 in the corner, um, but by the same token, we've never had this problem before, and it seems like it could be my headset. So if anybody has any advice on this, tech people, Bobby, podcast man, what if some kind of weird electronic feedback or something? We tried adjusting like every level setting we could think of, and it just it just won't go away. It won't go away. It'll go away if Carter goes away, but. That's kind of problematic for another reason. Right, exactly. Exactly. I don't think you can hear when Sean is talking either, so... Yeah, so I'll just... I'll fill the entire podcast. This will be... Sean has a podcast and Carter chimes in. (laughs) Sean has a podcast and Carter's listening. (laughs) (laughs) Instead of all you fine people. And all you fine people were supposed to tell us what kind of podcast you wanted this week, and you didn't. We did not. What, did you expect other people to do it for you? Oh, actually, I'm just wondering now, did I or did I not, did I say this or did I think this, that we would take their suggestions, but ultimately we would just decide? We, well, we said that, and that's ultimately what we are going to do, but, you know, it would have been nice to have a little bit of input. Maybe that they were so turned off by our, our brazenness at ignoring their input. It could be. It could be. Maybe, could... It, maybe it's the buzzing. <laughs> it's the buzzing. Like I'm just I'm I, I'm so fed up with these these amateurs with their buzzing. So help me, please help me. Help him. Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. I think it's a bad wire. Sean thinks it's a bad wire, which would lead me to <laughs> have to buy a new headset, which I don't want to do because if it's not the wire, then I have two headsets. I'm like, come on. Maybe you could borrow someone's and see, and we could test it. I could. I could maybe do that. I will be with a lot of nerdy people this next week. They, Someone will likely, more than one person will likely have a headset. I'm going to be non, non-Richmond, actually. We haven't talked about non, that. Non-Richmond? Non-Richmond. I'll, I will be in a part of the world that is non-Richmond. <laughs> what, what could that be like? What could that be like? Oh, man, it could be anywhere. I mean, there's a lot of places that are in that part of the world, like Tahiti and... Uh, Guam? Yeah. Uh, the, that... People always mention Guam. Guam. Where, what is Guam? What it's is just Guam? an island. Yeah. What's special about it? Why do people... I, I'm, I'm going to Guam. I think that the, the military shoots missiles at Guam. Well, I wouldn't want to go there then. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that before Navy... Someone should correct me on this because this sounds even even I'm saying it it sounds wrong. But I think before naval vessels can go out to sea, they have to fire their weapons at Guam to make sure they work. Does that sound right? I don't know. I have no idea. Sean and Carter at Gmail dot com. <laughs> Sean and Carter have a podcast and are clueless about geography. <laughs> or yeah, or you know, uh, na- U.S. naval vessel fitness t- fitness tests, <laughs> not fitness like. <laughs> you know, physical education, but <laughs> Navy I, calisthenic exercises. They don't have to do jumping jacks. I'm not <laughs> if they did, I mean, Oh God, I'm giving Michael Bay ideas. Just stop oh, cool. Stop. Cool. Yeah. yeah so but... while you're with all these nerdy people, uh, while I'm with them, dot, dot, dot. you should, you should definitely, uh, maybe we should try a podcast then. Yeah. Do a sound test podcast sound test we'll try we'll try and figure something out i I don't want to leave everyone in suspense i will be in chicago the great city the great windy city not the chicago and guam the chicago and illinois oh no but it's the windy city so maybe the buzzing will go away but then i'll be wind (laughs) 
<laughs> um, and uh, keep everybody keep your fingers crossed, but I'm I'm fairly certain that I will be going to Second City. Really? Very exciting. Yeah. I'm jealous. All yeah, right. I've never been in Chicago, let alone Second City. <laughs> I was in Chicago once in seventh grade to receive my Midwest Talent Search um, <laughs> Honors <laughs> Certificate. Wait, what was your talent? The, oh, the Midwest Talent Search. It's it, it, you take the SAT when you're in seventh grade, and if you score highly enough, you get to go to Chicago and get a little sticker. So wait, what did you get in seventh grade? Can you tell? Um, this was. So, Sean, I don't think you ever took a new SAT, right? You didn't have No, no, I did not. So I did take that um, for real when I was in junior, when I was a junior. But when I was in seventh grade, I believe I got, uh, should I, t- I don't, I don't know. That's awkward. I got a 1460. What? Yeah. I hate you. Sorry. Everyone listening hates you right now. Well, no, they don't because they've t- they're have they taking the 2,400 point test and they're like, 14, 14 Yeah, but 16. no one, no one, does anyone actually care about that extra test yet? It's been around for a long time. I yeah, but I don't think, I don't think half, half the universities are even looking at it. Yeah, I have no idea. They haven't transitioned yet. That's well, anyway, if anyone's curious, I, I, I did 1310 <laughs> when I was in, when I was in high school. Um, I don't know what my verbal and my math was my total was i don't remember either but i know my math was higher because i ignore the things that i'm good at and try the things that i'm bad at (laughs) (laughs) i would i would put money that my verbal was higher my i i i do math professionally but i'm not any good at it which is just like uh cruel fate um on the new test like my i don't know so i have no idea but i gotta shoot 23 20 yeah, and like I said, I don't know what that means. 2320 out of 2400. Close to perfect, but I didn't quite hit it. Close to perfect. Sad, sad face for Carter. He did so well in the SAT. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but I was bad at sports, so I was a loser. That didn't help <laughs> me until later in life. Well, that's all that matters later in life. I mean, unless you're going to die in a motorcycle accident at the age of 17 or something. But I wanted the cool kids to like me. Well, then you should be dead now. You would have been a great teacher. <laughs> uh, you should have been a, gui- a, a guidance counselor. Um, you should be dead right now. Oh, we gotta we gotta move on from this. Um, so we got a little bit of follow up from previous weeks. Um, first item is I meant to mention this point, but I didn't. So I will give the credit to Shizzy. She sent us an email saying. Um, Hey, uh, it is one of the reasons Netflix is doing what they're doing because the post office is probably going out of business? Yes. That's probably <laughs> part of the reason. Definitely a reasonable consideration. <laughs> um, last I heard, they were like $5 billion in the hole. So that could be part of it. Maybe. Yeah, they're, they're, they're at the point now where they're like, can we just deliver mail on Mondays? Will that work for everyone? <laughs> Because that's what we're down to. Instead of delivering the mail, can you just come and pick it up from, from us? <laughs> That'd be I, awesome. I read a book once. Have you ever read any Thomas Pynchon? Uh, no. No. He's been on uh, The Simpsons a couple times. He doesn't appear in public, so every time he's been on The Simpsons, he's appeared with a paper bag over his head. <laughs> And he wrote a book called The Crying of Lot 49, which was about a character who discovered this giant conspiracy by the United States government to shut down basically what was a privatized uh, mail system about 150 years ago. Hmm. It's pretty cool. I I don't it's not a true story, but uh, just the the idea of a (laughs) giant government conspiracy for the United States postal system to continue operating. Right. Right. Um. (laughs) They're so in love with the postal system. Totally. Um, yeah, no, I, is that based on a true story or did he? I don't it? think so. Um, cause I believe it's illegal. This, this whole podcast is Carter. Like, <laughs> I think this is how the government works, but I don't know. And it's probably like, <laughs> I think the post office has to like fire a weapon at Guam before they can deliver the mail. I think right. it's illegal to have a postal system that's outside of the USPS. Like, I, I don't think you're able to, like, set up bo- your own boxes. I don't, but I don't know. I think that's a rule. 
Could be. I Did, mean, it's not being done. It's not being done. You'd think that maybe you'd see that somewhere. Did you know that um, parcel services um, that actually use the post office for delivering some mail or some parcels? No. So there are... So this is actually really, really bad because people are like, yeah, well, you know, I can just send stuff through UPS, right? Or FedEx. Yeah. In certain rural... Or that other one, DHL. DHL. Um, that's a sore story in Ohio because <laughs> Ohio lost like 15,000 jobs because DHL closed their largest plant in the country. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I hate DHL. Uh, in like certain rural areas or just areas where there isn't a FedEx route, uh, they they give the items to the post office to deliver. <laughs> And they're like, hey, uh, we, don't, we don't know what to do with this. Basically, they're like, yeah, it's really, you know, it's, it's, it, it shows you, like, there shouldn't be a post office. Because it's like, here are these areas that FedEx is like, yeah, we're not going to have a route here. We'll just give it to the post office. They're like, like, there's no reason for a business to do this. <laughs> right. So it's like, uh, post office, I don't know. And, and, like, if you think about it, it's like, why, why the post office? Why is that a part of the federal government? Like this one because service. government and social services is what everyone is all about. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, so Shizzy, good point. Good point. Good point. Um, Shizzy, follow-up question: When the post office goes out of business, what are you going to do? Just, what, what's Reed Hastings going to do? What's Reed Hastings going to do? Well, he's he's going to be the CEO of Netflix, and Quickster <laughs> is going to be out of business. Just let Quickster die a quiet death. A quick death. Nice. Right. Um, another piece of follow-up. The saga of Notch and his <sighs> ineptitude. <laughs> I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna keep pu- putting in more positive words than what you actually want to say. <laughs> right. Thank you, Sean. Stupid face. Stupid face. I hate you, and I hate your ass face. Um. So. This lawsuit is on. It's happening. Oh yeah. It's on. Like done. I got my popcorn. I'm ready. I, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be on Court TV. This is gonna be bigger than Casey Anthony. Nice. Bigger than Johnny. So Cox. wait, someone's gonna die. Uh, who knows at this point? I mean, I think at the end of this, it'd be either Bethesda or Mo Yang. You know, one of them will be alive, and the other will be like the British soldier. When they finally have that Quake Three tournament. Yeah, that... exactly. It won't be. It, it will be. A, it will be real life. <laughs> It'll be real rocket launchers yeah. and real anti gravity guns. They should. They should challenge them to a game of Minecraft. <laughs> it's so <laughs> ludicrous on its face because it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna challenge you to Minecraft. It's like, um, what? <laughs> Hardcore mode. Hardcore. Deletes your map when you lose. Anyway, <laughs> the next the next thing happening with this nonsense the public component of it is notch has decided (laughs) that he is going to publish all of the documents that are being passed back and forth all the publishable documents right and i think that he's gonna have to scrub it to make sure that some content isn't in there to make sure he's not violating copyright and things like that but yeah he's gonna put it out there because he wants to be transparent transparently stupid stupid like, and the way that he's playing it is sort of like trying to make people think that there's like there's lots of juicy stuff in these documents. Like, you know, when um, do you know the blog talking points memo? No. Okay. Um, they don't pay attention to real things. things whatever. They uh, talking points memo follows government and politics, and uh, they will frequently get you know stuff from like WikiLeaks or whatever and sure. it's like a hundred thousand pages and they'll, they'll ask their readers like hey here's all this stuff you know many hands make light work everybody go read through these things and if you see something interesting send us an email okay yeah i've, I've seen, definitely seen things people, like that before yeah, people do that i i kind of think that's what notch would like people to do but these are like the most boring documents ever <laughs> it's not like yeah i think that um I think that Joe Biden, mur- you know, <laughs> murdered a s- Saudi woman to prevent her from <laughs> s- 
from letting everyone know that we've been po that we've been poisoning all the children in the Middle East. Oh my God, this is a bombshell. It's like you don't think Bethesda has been doing that all along. <laughs> I think that Bethesda. I you know what I think? I think that Mojang is actually a super secret subsidiary of Bethesda, and that they're doing this whole thing to try and like get everybody all riled up and paying attention for Skyrim because it's a giant PR stunt mm -hmm. because no, I mean, obviously no one is going to buy Skyrim. Well, I've never, I hadn't even heard of it before Notch started talking about it. The elder something. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's who's paying attention to that game. Bethesda, what are they doing? How many, how many bridges is Notch burning by doing this? How many other large developers are like, if he's being this big of a baby about this, I'm never going to work with him? Good point. I mean, I have no idea. Probably this is... This is a bad idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. Bad idea, Jeans, Notch. Um, and in my continuing Apple fanboyness, I would say to Notch at all and company... Anytime you're thinking of doing a public communication, ask yourself, would Apple be doing this? Or ask your lawyers. Or ask your lawyers. <laughs> Who you seem to despise so much, even though they're trying to save your ass. <laughs> um, oh, there's a helicopter going by. At least it's not the buzzing. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's Mo Yang. They're out to find They're me. like, we're going to shut this down. <sighs> yeah. I, I have no advice for them at this point. It'd be, this is just this just defies common sense. So. <sighs> They're beyond saving, Carter. Let it go. You know what's going to be really funny? Um, <laughs> if Scrolls sucks? Yeah. Because, you know, what's going to be really funny is that um, eventually there will be no more people buying Minecraft. Because everyone will have bought it. And there will Anyone be who wants it. Yeah, and they will not have anything else to sell. Well, that's when they start dev on Minecraft 2. <laughs> with, a, with a fourth dimension. <laughs> Somehow. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what they would do for a sequel. I don't want to get into it. I don't want to. If you, if, ideas for Minecraft 2. Send those in, too. <laughs> What would <laughs> what would Minecraft two be? What type of Please do not be? describe new mobs. <laughs> I will call you out in public. I will find your address and telephone number and give it to people. I yeah, no, no new mobs or new items. I I think it's it's laughable. I I picked up one point nine. I there's nothing different in one point nine to one point eight that I can determine uh, except there's just like some new stuff. Well, what what has any update ever been other than just some new stuff? Lighting engine and some things like that. Okay, once they added a new lighting engine. Right, but yeah, it has mostly just been like, hey, more stuff, more stuff. And it's like I don't care. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. I've, let's move on. Let's move on to more interesting things. So, I, okay, Sean, do you want? Should we continue with hate? <laughs> or or with or with love because we could go in two directions we could talk I, I, maybe we should get the hate out of the way okay we could talk about android or we could talk about amazon hate? wait you hate amazon uh -oh. no, no i hate android <laughs> oh, well, i love okay. amazon <laughs> <laughs> yeah let, let's let's complain about android a little bit All right, i'm getting my phone out it's almost dead so i'm not gonna be able to speak too much about it so you've had an android phone for a lot longer than i have right Sure, yeah. What do you... Do you like it? The, I I use my phone for email, text messaging, and occasionally searching the internet or looking up weather. I don't think I do anything else with it, mm -hmm. which is probably bad. <laughs> <laughs> that probably means that the phone is not performing the function that it was designed to. Yeah, so maybe I should describe my day-to-day -day use of my iPhone, right? Um, until very recently, on a daily basis, I recorded vlogs on this and uploaded them to YouTube. 
Uh, I'm going to, here, I'll contrast it with mine as you go through them. I cannot record videos on my phone because whenever I try to use my video camera, my phone locks up. Doesn't and seem... the sound is awful. The sound on yours, on your vlogs, it's not like awesome, but it's definitely legible. I can hear what you're saying. On mine, I can't even hear what I'm saying most of the time. Right. Not, not, not good. Not good. Not good. Um, you might have something comparable, but you might have a complaint about um, other things. I, I somewhat frequently will take pictures with my phone uh, with a very high quality uh, 5 meg- megapixel camera and post them to Twitter. I used to do that until uh, my camera stopped working with any Twitter app that I've tried. <laughs> it's It still takes very nice pictures. I just can't send them anywhere anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I email on here and I'm, let, let me open up my email. I have and manage five different email accounts, two of which are professional slash work related exchange accounts. Ooh. Fancy. Um, and it works great. I, I have a feeling, I have a feeling that yours works fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. I use, I use the Gmail app. I, I, I force everything into one Gmail account because basically all the email I receive is related to one thing. I don't, I don't have that personal professional divide. Right. So I can't get, I can't get this phone. This might be just my own problem, but I can't get the actual built in email client to accept uh, all of my accounts and work with them. So I have to use the Gmail app on my work phone. I don't think I've ever even tried to use the default mail app. I've always used the Gmail app. Well, it, the, def, the, uh, the mail client seems pretty good uh, when I've seen it work with other people, but I can't make it work. And it is not at all obvious how to get it to work, um, which is a huge problem for me. <laughs> so, uh, okay, there's that. What else? Um, I download and listen to podcast and music on a probably daily basis on my iPhone. I all the music that I use for mine I now stream off of Google Music. Um I also and oh it, And that work that works well except the Google Music app is kind of buggy and slow, which I'm sure every Android user is aware of if they're using it. Sure, sure. I also put Spotify on here which works great. The app works fantastic. I am still not a premium user, but we'll talk about Spotify in a little bit. Um, I, I, what else? Um, oh, uh, Netflix. Uh, I have the Netflix app on my phone and at least once a week I'll watch, uh, like an episode of Rust Development or something like that when I'm in, in between things. I have tried that and I can't believe how, how awesome that app works. Yeah. And the quality that it streams over a Wi-Fi connection is amazing. Sort of unbelievable. Sort of unbelievable. Um, what else? Uh, I, I'm leaving my final thing, the biggest thing I use my phone for, for last. I think I'm there. Um, and that is going online and browsing websites. I use my iPhone constantly. I sometimes prefer to use my iPhone to an actual computer to browse websites. Wow, really? Yes. I would never say that about my Android. Um, I have found the web experience to be very, I'm, I'm being sort of clinical about this. I'm not, I'm trying not to let emotions play into <laughs> to, to, to my feelings about this Android phone. The web experience is very different from on my iPhone. And I, How, what exactly does the iPhone do? <sighs> Part of what makes the whole experience better is that Everything in the UI, the way that I've that I would describe it is that it, everything feels like it's stuck to your finger, and just like when you move something on the screen, it will instantaneously move without any jerking or uh, oh my gosh anything <laughs> like that. It's just like it's like you have complete control over it. You can flick through web pages and like just you can get to the bottom of a very long web page like almost instantaneously and boom i there. would never say this about my android content done on a 3g connection not even over wi-fi now some of that is 
just design decisions. If they don't have, if the content isn't available right away, it will still scroll and everything is stuck to your finger and you'll end up where you want to be at the end. And it will just put these like little checkers on the screen instead of the content. And it's going to be like, mm, yep, we'll just get to wherever you need to get. And then we'll get the content there as, you know, right after. So it's, okay. you know, so that was just a, a, a choice. Like, we want you to feel like you're always in control. So if we have to like momentarily sort of like black out your content for a second, we think that that's better than it just being like, jerk, 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 jerk. <laughs> also, I, this could be a learned habit, but I can't get, I, I have a problem using the key, the built-in keyboard, the stock keyboard on my, on my Android phone. I, and I think this is what it is. On my iPhone, when I'm typing, if I make an error, it will autocorrect it. And most of the time it gets it right. And then if it doesn't, I'll notice. On my Android, if I mistype something, it won't autocorrect it. It will offer me suggestions, but once I push space, it's like, oh, okay, I guess that's what you wanted to type. <laughs> mine, uh, mine autocorrects to what it thinks it should unless I backspace and tell it not to. Could just be something with this. I don't know. It could be Moto Blur or Mo- Motorola or whoever is handling the, the OEM who's handling yeah. the rest of it. I don't know. I, I have had, I do have frequent trouble with certain words that I've accidentally taught my Android to pick the wrong thing. Sure, sure. Um, and iOS 5 is going to kind of blow, blow this out of the water because it's going to have a built-in dictionary application that is across the entire phone. And Woohoo! Thank you, Apple. Um, so you can look up a word anywhere you're anywhere where you can push a word. Yeah. Uh, but also you can add and subtract things to that uh, dictionary um, at will. So that will be nice. Very nice. Thank you. Um, I, I gotta say, if I had to pick one thing about Android that I hate the most using this phone. It's the buttons at the bottom. Why are there these buttons at the bottom of the screen? What do you have? I Every Android phone has these four. It's search, the very confusing back button, <laughs> the home button, and the even more confusing settings or I don't know. Or menu, menu or whatever. I, yeah. I, I would call it the push me and see what happens button. <laughs> Why are there these buttons on the phone? Why are they here? I don't understand this at all. Why is this not just part of the the UI? Yeah, I I use them, you but there's no reason that they couldn't just be part of the UI. And I say the confusing back button because it it works differently depending on where you are. So if you're in a web browser, it will take you back one page. If you're in an app, it will take you back to where whatever app you were in just before. Not if you're in a browser. <laughs> so Yeah, I, the I back button is definitely the most confusing of those. And I just hate the the fact that there's the settings button. I'm get I guess I'm getting used to it, but it's like anytime I'm in something, I'm like, wow, where do I go to X? Like, how do I change my account in email? And I look and I look and I press all the buttons on the screen. And I'm like, oh, I guess I have to press the magic button. Maybe it's in there. (laughs) That's what it should say. It should just say magic. Magic button. Push me and see what happens. Jack in the box button. Um, I just, yeah, no, I don't, I mean, I don't understand why these buttons are here. I do kind of, because the history of Android is really tortured. Um, It was like, it was a, uh, a phone OS that looked a lot like Symbian the Nokia uh, operating system that we all know and love. Um, (laughs) We do? (laughs) uh, That I used on my Nokia phone back in the day. Um, And it was supposed to be, you know, like a free alternative to the BlackBerry and the Symbian OS and Windows Phone 6 at that time. And Google was sort of like, yeah, maybe we'll buy that. Maybe we'll do a phone. And then... Apple came out and was like, hey, you know what you thought a phone was? Well, (laughs) 
It's it's your cousin, Marvin Berry. That sound you were looking for? Well, listen to this. And um, that's how Apple did it. They went. They went back it was a time travel thing. They went through time. I can talk about that in in a minute. Um, but Apple sort of redefined what a phone should be, and Android had to scramble to make it more like that. Uh, because it had been something that you have hardware buttons and a little clicky scroll wheelie pointer kind of whatever. They all have different names. Right. Do you, actually, sorry. Do you, under your four buttons, do you also have another singular button? I don't. I've got one on my Incredible that I have no idea what it's for. I know it takes pictures. <laughs> but other than that, I never press that button and I don't know what it's for. It's vestigial. It, it's it's the button that looks like the iPhone button. Right. What it comes from is that Android used to have five input buttons. The fifth one was a middle scroll wheel clicky select button, and you couldn't actually use it with a touch screen. You had to actually maneuver things around, like on a old like an old BlackBerry. Um, oh my gosh! It does scroll through things now that I'm actually using it. Yeah. It scrolls left to right if I move my finger over it, it's, like it's part of the touch screen. Mm-hmm, yeah. That's that's Android 2.0. I, I think my phone actually runs 2.2.3, the newest one. Um, but yeah, so it, and that doesn't have support for the clicky thing anymore. Gotcha. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, ice cream sandwich. Jeez, what a stupid name. Um, they really hemmed themselves in with the dessert stuff, starting with you know with a, starting alphabetically. <laughs> 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 um, uh, because it worked really pretty well for a while, you know. It's like eclair, froyo, gingerbread, uh, honeycomb, sort of, and then an I. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. And then you get to I. Ice cream sandwich. I have to start going to multiple words. Yeah. Um, although, uh, not. They, I'll give them props for this. They found a name that I really like because I believe it's a reference to Arrested Development. <laughs> Ice cream sandwich. That is. Yeah. George is in, he's in love with those ice cream sandwiches. You didn't see it. I'll, I'll send you a, a, a YouTube link. You can put it in the show notes. Okay. He's eating ice cream sand- sandwiches in prison. And he, he really... <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, I just, I don't want, I don't really want to get into the like strategic stuff about Android because I think that's all been d- done to death. It's just like, I really don't like this phone. <laughs> <laughs> has nothing to do with like oh fragmentation and whatever and google you know they're like nazis and right whatever i i don't I, I i care about that but it's like at the end of the day i could probably get past that if i was like wow this is a great phone right you want to like think of it from a user who's never going to think about any of that stuff if they look at these two phones side by side and they don't know anything about the companies or anything they're going to go with the one with the ui that feels like it's natural responsive pretty (laughs) yes and i hear people talk about this all the time that you know android android people with quotation marks around it you know it's like our you know our operating system is better you know because it's you know it's it's open and you can do more stuff with it and i have more control and and you know apple you know they're they're like they're the nazis with their app store and you can't put stuff on it you have to go against the rules and jailbreak your phone if you want to get anything out of it which is totally not true that's just that's just bold but um what <laughs> I, I what they don't understand is and what this is what i hear a lot of people say the only reason apple is winning is because of marketing right they're marketing better you know if android had better marketing we'd be winning and it's like well you, marketing isn't just like telling people you have something great it's telling people that you have something great and they agree with you right that it is great and they do and i do and that's why i said next time i buy a phone i'm gonna try and get an iphone i would recommend it to anybody who wants a a space phone you know, a phone that works yes. um and just incidentally i don't i have had i have had more call quality problems with my android phone than with my iphone that could just be my individual phone and i don't want to like take my one case and say you know android phones have worse call call quality than the iphone but 
I have. Have you ever had any show stopping things happen to you on your iPhone? Like, like the way that I can't use my video camera. No, never, never. Everything. No, I can't think of one time, one time. Oh, actually, yes. It was a hardware problem. The, uh, the only thing that, and I've had three iPhones now. Um, the only thing that has ever happened that screwed things up for me was that my top clicker button, it's the sleep wake button. Yeah. Uh, it got stuck. So I did what any Apple person does. I scheduled an appointment with a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to an Apple store and they took, this is, this is how it went down. This is how easy it was. I went to the store. I said, my sleep wake button doesn't work. And they took a look at it and they pressed it a few times and it didn't work. They checked to make sure that I hadn't submerged my phone in water with a little flashlight. And they're like, let me go get you a new phone. That sounds horrible. <laughs> I can't believe you had to go through that. <sighs> it's just uh, so wonderful. I love them. <laughs> um, they're like, um, what's uh, what's that brand of true value? The like hardware mm-hmm. set, like if uh, like if you break it. You just take it to a Sears, and they're like, oh, this broke. We'll get you a new one. Totally. And actually, Apple's warranty, I don't know if it spells this out in any great detail, and maybe you have great warranties in Android world. One of my complaints would be, who the hell knows, because there's like a dozen different places making these phones, and you can go into any store in the world and get one, and the warranties are all different, so you can't say. But in Apple land, there's one warranty for your phone. And if something Apple was responsible for fails, if, if even if you've done something to the phone that is in some way has deteriorated it, they'll still give you a new one. So when I Steve in, Jobs will come to your house <laughs> and give you a new phone. Exactly. I had a crack in my screen as well. And they I was like, oh, is there a problem that there's a crack in the screen? They're like, no, because that has nothing to do with your hardware button failing, and that's our fault. We'll give you a new phone. Wow. Then that's like, if you just take it in for a cracked screen, that's going to be like 100 bucks or something, right? Depends on which is what. It depends on what's broken. If the back... Uh, the one thing about this phone, the glass back really is kind of like nerve-wracking. Um... If you break the back, it's twenty dollars. If you break the front, it's like one hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, because the back is just like a piece of glass. The front is a piece of glass on top of your space age technology, <laughs> <laughs> um, which they have failed. Uh, if you saw this, is, this this is turning into the Apple podcast, um, as it normally does when I'm speaking. Um, they have failed so far in a, a, a U.S. appellate court to. Um, to get the legal go ahead to copyright and patent multi-touch which i think is probably right (laughs) they've been trying very hard to say that nobody else can have multi-touch on anything yeah i that's gonna be i mean that's gonna be required technology for everything going forward apple would like them to be the only ones who can provide it but well that's probably not gonna happen that's not happening i the the uh, up, the way appellate courts work is that, you know, there's three judges, but the opinion, so I don't know who wrote this, but the opinion was, this is so, this is such a prominent technology throughout the, the entire culture, both in the United States and the world, it's unreasonable for any one entity to claim that they can have sole ownership over it. <laughs> like the word scrolls. Hey, Notch, and guess what? <laughs> Apple hasn't said anything about this. They're just like okay we're just keep doing what we're doing <laughs> they're just they're they're not publishing court documents to their blog no um and <laughs> this is a li- little bit more significant and substantial than you know you took our game name <laughs> this is like the future of technology in- yeah this is like a, a trade this is something very important to business and trade yes so notch take note okay uh end of the story i hate my phone i hate this phone and i'm indifferent towards mine which is not a that's not good either not good not good um 
oh, the final thing that I'm going to complain about, I, I don't know because I think they're all different, but uh, my phone application, it groups all of the buttons that you can use when you're on a call at the bottom all next to each other, and I frequently hit the mute button. I'm on conference calls a lot, and I will hit the mute button. It's very helpfully nanometers away from the end button, which is not much bigger than it, and right above it, and I inevitably, one out of every three times, will hit the end button. Yeah, yours is definitely different than mine, then. I don't have that problem. Yeah, that's Motorola's fault. So, Motorola, shame on you for having put that button put that button so close to all the other buttons. It's ridiculous. It's right next to the button you use to flip the screen to enter numbers. It makes no sense to me. The Apple phone app, the end button is a different shape, color, and in a different location from all of the other buttons. My end call button is a big red button on the bottom. Yes, that's the right way. <laughs> okay, so I guess HTC got it right in this case. Good job, HTC. Please copy Apple. And they then the, the speakerphone and the mute button are beside each other on the screen under the person who you're talking to. Um, yeah, it's similar on an iPhone. You have like six buttons that you can choose, and they're all in the, the, middle, the, the middle 40. So, Amazon. So more technological devices. Yeah. Next week, we got to do a lot of, like, video games or, like, fantasy books or some comic books or something. I don't know. <laughs> we got to get out of this technology stuff. But a lot happened this week. Um, Amazon has finally taken a lid off of the secret projects that they've been working on for all these years. That everyone knew they were working on, right. just not the details. Right. Um, hey, Microsoft, take notice. <laughs> You've got this, like almost operating system for tablets that you're letting people play with now um amazon has been working on this for probably years and they waited until it was done to show it that's probably the right way to do it I... and it's cheap Whew. oh boy grab grab your seats kids you can get yourself a shiny new android tablet which they have, didn't say was an android tablet because they don't care <laughs> for the low, low price of one ninety nine. Wow, less than a PS3? Are you kidding? Yeah, one ninety nine. It is the cheapest tablet I can think of uh, that is not, you know, the <laughs> not the clearance fire sale version of a tablet. The EYE pad. <laughs> That's iPad. I got it. And actually, they introduce a suite of things. Um, so they've got touchscreen Kindles, regular Kindles, which now have a touchscreen. No, yeah, keep, keep for a hundred bucks. Um, a non a confusing non touchscreen version that still has the five way rocker at the bottom for yeah for eighty dollars. Yeah. And this is the part that I'm I'm a little confused about. They've got those three. They've got the non-touch one, the touch one uh, with 3G and without 3G. And then they've got the, those same ones, but with the keyboards. They're still selling those for a little I, bit less money. Well, I guess they're afraid of the, the octogenarian <laughs> demographic leaving because they like those people, and those people like buttons. Yeah, that's horrible. I hate that. I'm so glad they got rid of the buttons. Um and then, of course, the fire, which is a lot of ta a lot of tablets are looking like this um, outside of the Apple world. It's got that like 16 by nine um, aspect ratio. So it's, really, it's like really tall and thin is how it looks. So I don't know about that. Is uh, is the iPad a four three ratio? It is. I didn't even know that it is. It's four three. Um, and I th think I like that better just for browsing. Yeah, I think for browsing, it would maybe their their idea is that more people use it for viewing video, and video is all pretty much going sixteen nine now. Yeah, if you if you use an iPad, you get the, the black bars, but it's such a large device that you get most of the viewing area you would get on on the seven inch tablets that you get on it. Sure. So, um, except the Samsung Galaxy Tab ten point one, I believe, is also sixteen by nine. So if you want a giant movie viewing screen you can go get that but i believe it's like 500 <laughs> or you can buy a tv or you can buy a tv 
<laughs> um, there was, uh, I forget, I listened to a lot of Dan Benjamin's podcasts on his 5x5 network, and one of, I think it was Marco Armand, he created Instapaper, and, and he developed Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Um, wow, I had no idea one person did both of those things. Yeah. Um, I love Instapaper, and Tumblr, I'm indifferent to, but it seems like people really like it. Um, he was talking about like crazy like some crazy things that he's seen out in the world um in terms of like computers like big computers i think they were talking about like yeah someone had a one of a 17 inch macbook pro out in the world you know it's like who would carry these things around they're like 10 pounds they get really hot they're giants and marco was relating a story that he saw a 70 year old man playing world of warcraft at a panera but he was playing it on an imac that he brought a, a, 20, what? a 27 inch iMac at that. He just carts around? <laughs> yeah. So That could be the coolest 70 year old man ever. Um, I, I would like to meet him. I would like to meet him. So on the far end of the other end of that spectrum, you got these seven inch tablets like the fire. Um, interesting name, right? It's called the Kindle Fire. I like it. It's sexy. It's sexy. It's on fire because it's fast. It is I mean, thank God they didn't try and like knock off the name of the iPad or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like the, the Kindle pad. pad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They just avoided that altogether. Good job. And um, it doesn't look like an iPad all that much. It it sort of um, surprising, <laughs> surprisingly or not at all surprisingly in any way looks exactly like the playbook the tablet that blackberry was going to uh, roll out and the reason why it looks like the playbook is that it's the playbook they just <laughs> blackberry was like all right we're not going to make these and amazon was like hey you got some leftover playbooks can we buy them and yeah do you them? think any anyone from that team ended up over there could be yeah working um, on amazon the, the biggest thing amazon did was take android and turn it into something that they liked um and the, Which is probably what would be not if people more people actually did that, we'd probably not be complaining so much about Android. Probably, um, and I think it's just silly to try and have a culture or you know some sort of brand loyalty around Android, um, and that because it's like so many different things in so many different places to so many different people. Yeah, Amazon is like no, it's who cares about Android? That's just what's under the covers. You're you're this is a Kindle. Like, ah, Kindle, I like that. I get what I want from it. <laughs> um, and Google's strategy really should just be to get Android on anything. Like, Android should be running, you know, the computer in your car. Sure. Like that. Stuff yeah. that Linux does mostly these days. Um, and one of the major things they changed or they added to was the browser. The They... they are not using the stock browser in any way, shape, or form on the on the Kindle Fire. They're using a browser that they call Silk. That also sounds sexy. They're good at this naming thing. Silk, because it's uh, I. The branding I I presume around it is that um, it's very glossy and clean, but it's also light and strong. Um, <laughs> right. Silk. If someone just tuned in right now, they're like, ooh. What? What's, what's this podcast? Sean and Carter <laughs> after dark. Um, what Silk does is very, very interesting. Instead of like every other browser in the world, and we don't have tech savvy enough people to correct me on this. I'm sure there are some browsers that do this, but none of the major browsers that people use on their phone or their computer do this. Uh, instead of doing all of the uh, TCP IP all those passing protocols and opening up connections and pulling stuff down from the internet on your actual computer, that stuff happens on Amazon servers and the servers send it to your tablet. So your tablet doesn't have to really do very much. That's amazing. Yes. Um, have you heard of on live? No. What is on live? Stevie of Minecraft BOB fame has, um, he has a subscription with on live.com, which is a video game rental service that basically their servers handle all of the 
hard part of running a video game and through a broadband connection you stream the video game to your computer so you can play much more technologically advanced games that you would not be able to play on your computer because they're handling all of the cpu part of it maybe uh maybe they should uh get a deal with minecraft (laughs) <laughs> they maybe, should because so many people can't even play that game maybe they what they really need are you know <laughs> intel xeon westmere you know three gigahertz 80 core processors and then we'll be able to play minecraft wow you lost me 20 seconds ago sorry um yes very similar idea um, yeah i like that that's that sounds great it's I, so, it's it sounds like the cloud it is the cloud because it's based on <laughs> uh i didn't watch jeff bezos bezos i don't i i don't know how to pronounce it, the ceo of amazon i did not watch that the guy. presentation that guy jeff i didn't um, either because i was uh told that it was like on, oh, like over two hours long and incredibly boring so i Yikes. did not subject myself to it um I just read the stuff. Uh, but like one of the big themes was Amazon is a bunch of services. There's um, Amazon Prime. There's Amazon in- Streaming. There's Cloud Locker. There's S3 and EC2. They're like cloud server stuff. There's all this stuff that Amazon is. And the idea was, how can we make a consumer electronics product that takes all of this cool stuff that we've got and makes a great experience for people. One of the ideas was, hey, we have this EC2 thing, um, electronic cloud computing, I think is what that stands for. Um, If you use any service in the world online, you're using EC2, like Tumblr uses EC2, and Mm -hmm. Amazon.com uses EC2. Everything uses it. It's just a bunch of servers all across the world that people can... um, can can use virtually uh but ec2 was an internal amazon product it was how they made amazon.com work they just scaled it very large and decided hey world if you ever need a server come here we'll get we'll give you a server and it's yours and you can do all your stuff on it and if you need more you just click a button and now you've got another server and it's exactly like the first one um they're like hey we've got all this server stuff maybe we could use it to like make people's web experience better that's such a brilliant idea (laughs) And when only, is Apple going to steal it? This is this is a huge problem for Apple. I don't think that this is a competitor to the iPad. Uh, I think I will probably buy the Fire, but that would not stop me from getting an iPad. Um, different different demographics. Yeah, it's it's very different. I would use my Fire for reading reading books, more streaming movies from Amazon mm-hmm. probably, uh, and doing some web browsing. Uh, Whereas my iPad is almost like a laptop replacement. Yeah. Um, Apple does not do these data centers. They that is not what they're about. They are they make stuff, and that's 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 gonna be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. they so they need to get real friendly with Amazon, I guess. Maybe that's their thing, though. They don't like having yeah. other people. They don't. They're like they're people. the alpha dog. Yeah, and they don't like having to depend on other people. Right. Like, <laughs> like AT and T. Like AT and T. That's like. I mean, I'm sure that they like the leverage they have over AT and T, but <laughs> didn't stop them from going to Verizon. And if Apple could get away with operating their own network, they probably would. Yeah. Um. We'll see how this iCloud thing goes. North Carolina data center. Um. There's a. <laughs> there's there's a saying in the Apple like online community. Uh. Do you know Godwin's Law? I'm going to call it the Apple Sphere. The Apple Sphere? The mothership. Um, <laughs> do you know Godwin's Law? No. Godwin's Law? It's um, it's from back in the days of Flame Wars on, like, uh, Usenet and IRC stuff. Um, Godwin's Law is... Everyone's heard of it. It's the, uh, the longer an internet debate goes on, the probability of a reference to Hitler or the Nazis reaches <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> and the corollary to godwin's law is the person or persons who invoke hitler or the nazis uh, automatically lose the debate oh 
That's a good rule. It's a good rule. It's a good rule. There's a similar Godwin's law in the Apple community, in the Apple sphere, that the longer a discussion or debate about Apple continues, the like the probability of someone invoking the North Carolina data center approaches one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like anytime you're sort of like struggling to like yeah, figure something out with like yeah iTunes and you know maybe they, they're gonna put iTunes in the cloud and oh it, that must be what the North Carolina data center is oh for. that's what it's for or it's like yeah you know it's like they're gonna start they're gonna put as many Apple TVs out there as they want it's because they're gonna start their own Netflix like thing or they're gonna buy Netflix and they're gonna shove all this content down our throats and they're gonna do it using the North Carolina data center ah <laughs> <laughs> well, Amazon, the problem is the North Carolina data center was, is two years old and it's never been used practically. Amazon has had their servers up for decades almost. They've, Amazon's been around since 1993. Yeah. Something like that. Since the, since the world. I remember hitting it. Uh, I was The first time I ever saw it was when I was 10. So it was 1995. And it was a stupid looking purple. <laughs> yes. It had... It was purple and it was a repeating texture. Like that's how old the website was. It had like <laughs> it had like flashing banners and and gyms. obviously <laughs> it only sold books. Mm -hmm. That's all it sold. It, I'm looking it's at the Wikipedia like prehistory. I'm looking at the Wikipedia and um, it was founded in 1994. Okay. And it went live on 1995 in 1995. Um, I'm sure I'm sure it was one of the very first websites I even knew about. Holy zombie Jesus. I'm looking at their products. Zappos is part of Amazon. No wonder What's I Zappos? love them so much. Oh, you don't know Zappos? No. Zappos is an online store for buying shoes. Yeah, I don't I I I buy a pair of shoes once every 2 years if I have to. I'm a I'm a girl when it comes to shoes. I I, I love shoes. <laughs> oh my god, shoes! Oh my god. Um, I have some new shoes coming my way. Uh, just just now, I've got some blue and brown Adidas sneaks um, from Zappos. Mm -hmm, from Zappos. Amazing. They also do Audible, which I love. Yes. IMDb. I didn't know that. And some other things. Um, something called Woot. What is Woot? Uh, it's the thing you say when you are excited. I don't know. I, I'm I'm looking at the I'm literally looking at the Woot Wikipedia page. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's it's the North Carolina Data Center. It's the North Carolina Data Center. Um, <laughs> people, I mean, people talk about like the the conflict and the the rivalry between Google and Apple, uh, and it used to be between Microsoft and Apple. Yeah, and I think that Amazon gets left out of a lot of those discussions. I think that you think that they're okay with that. <laughs> I think that they're fine with that. <laughs> I think they are. Um, I think they're perfectly fine. With <laughs> I bet they're like, we're making plenty of money over here, being ignored. Exactly, and it, they are. They're they're a company to watch because it's like, it's hard to imagine. I mean, think about what they do on a daily basis. They have a database of basically every product in the world <laughs> because it's even buy, ones they don't sell, even ones they don't sell. They have a database of every product in the world that has price information, um, product reviews, customer reviews, images, links to outside websites, um, and then a method to purchase those items that gets queried hundreds of millions of times a week maybe even hundreds of millions of times a day yeah that's incredible that's like to just imagine that like think of if you as a person were like standing out in the middle of an empty field and there were a hundred million people around you and all of them were trying to ask you a question <laughs> and you were somehow able to answer them all at once exactly like how many would how many of you would it take <laughs> It would take 100 million of you or maybe like 10 million of you um and you, you might die from all those people coming and asking you questions or you might get thirsty and need you know or need to go to the bathroom like and, i don't remember the last time amazon went down except for the the last time they were hacked yes um their uptime is through the roof 
they're an unbelievable company, and I think that this is a brilliant <laughs> this is a brilliant strategy to put a, a a cool device in my hands so I can give them more money. Everyone wins. Everyone wins. I and I will probably start buying ebooks if I have it. That's yeah, Alicia's my... got a she has a nook that she doesn't use very much, but she uses that Barnes and Noble account to buy ebooks all the time. This was the follow-up that I that I forgot. I didn't write down. Ron asked a question of me on Twitter. Uh, I said I tweeted um, in pre- in preview of this podcast that um, I will likely be getting a Kindle of some variety, and mm-hmm. I'm still not sure if I'm going to get the Fire or if I'm going to get one of the um, e-ink ones. I think I'm going to get the Fire. You're going to get the Fire. I, I'm knowing me as i do i think uh, maybe i'll and maybe i'll get one of those later too because they're they're like basically i think that they're going to start putting those kindles in the bottom of you know cereal boxes oh my god yeah they're going to be ubiquitous um and ron asked me pointedly why don't you just get an ipad with the kindle app on it well ron I probably will get an iPad with the Kindle app on it, quite frankly. Not soon. And my my Apple purchase that's going to come up first will be an, Mac, an 11-inch MacBook Air, which is basically an iPad Pro. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> they, should, they should start marketing it that, as that. Yeah. Um, iPad Pro. That's what it is. I mean, especially with Lion on it, with the, you know, the App Store and all that. You know, different conversation. Um, yeah. I want a kindle because it is optimized for letting me buy things from amazon and you can't do that on an ipad it's not optimized for that in fact it's against the rules which is a little silly it's against the apple way to be able to buy stuff through an app um, unless you fork over 30 percent of it to the folks in cupertino yikes yes and the way that that's like that's higher than a mob cut well, and it's you can't do it in the book in the book industry because the way the book industry is set up, sort of very inconveniently, is uh, publishers get 70 percent of the purchase price. Whatever you sell it for, the publisher gets seventy percent of it. So if you sell okay. it for ten dollars, they get seven dollars. So you get three dollars. But so where's that thirty percent coming out of? There would be zero percent left over for. <laughs> For Amazon, <laughs> <laughs> they would be selling things for nothing. <laughs> they couldn't recover any of the va- of the price. And the way that the publishing right. industry is set up, they're not going to say you you can give us seventy percent of some after fee price. They're like no thirty percent, seventy percent of the purchase price. That's the deal. That's how it's worked forever. So unless Apple changes that rule, you'll never be able to buy stuff uh, from. Uh, you'll never be able to buy books uh, on an iPad. You'll have to go through the web browser, buy it on a website, go back to your app. That's totally inconvenient. And with the Kindle Fire, it has my Amazon information cooked into it. So if I want to buy a real book and have it shipped to me, I just go, boop, go through their store app, say I want this book, and it's shipping to me right now. Having Amazon Prime has made me stop going to places like Walmart. <laughs> like, if I need to get, like, vacuum cleaner bags or something, I don't go to a store because I can get it sent right to my house with no tax and no shipping. Why would I go anywhere? Yeah. It's unbelievably good. And unlike... There's sort of like two totally different strategies between an iPad and, and the Kindle Fire. Unlike the iPad, uh, the Kindle, a- Amazon doesn't care to make any money off of selling this tablet. They're probably selling it at a loss, frankly. $199 is really low for a tablet of the quality that it is. They're probably selling it at a loss for now, maybe a year from now or something. They'll they'll pull the uh, Nintendo strategy. Yeah, it's, it's a lot like a gaming console. Um, and if they sell Kindle Fires for several years, like a gaming console, eventually they'll start making money off of it. Yeah. Parts get cheaper, blah, blah, blah. Economies of scale, all that, all that jazz. They're, yeah, they are a lot like a gaming console because they're, they're not selling you 
they're not making their money off of the fire. They're making their money off of the stuff that you buy to use on the fire. Exactly. So, um, all those ten dollar ebooks and uh, your and <laughs> it's very devious. Uh, if you buy a Kindle Fire, you get a thirty day free subscription to Amazon Prime. <laughs> They want it because it's such a good service and enough people and not enough people are using it. They want people to try it and get hooked on it like I did. I, I think I did a, a 30 day free trial um, and I have been on Amazon. I got a year for free. If you had a dot edu account, I don't know if you still can, but if you had a dot edu account, you could get a free year and that got me hooked in. And then after they after you discontinue, they have they have the price. So if you want to, uh, if you decline resubscribing, about a month later, they'll send you an email that says, hey, remember Amazon Prime? Wasn't that great? Do you want it for $39 instead of $79? Because we'll totally do that. So and then you cool. totally sign up again. There's, the, the, the strategy behind this is it's like layers of loss leaders. Um, a, a loss leader is, you know, something that you sell at a loss to get people to buy other things. It's like drugs. Like drugs <laughs> that <first> one, <laughs> drugs sorry i was watching weeds and they actually described lost leader that way <laughs> like drugs <laughs> um yeah that's that's it's like that it's that first dime bag um right the, the, they're making their money on the stuff that they can sell you so their their loss leader is the tablet and the prime service is probably is probably i bet it breaks even you know yeah um they're not making off their they're not, they're not making money off of prime they're making money on people buying more things right and i totally did because i had it me too it's like it's it's the inverse of the apple strategy their loss leader is itunes the iTunes, the app store all that stuff people complain like oh man they take that 30 percent cut you really think that 30 percent cut on those dollar apps is paying for all the servers that they have to have and all of the the the, the content delivery networks that they're using to get that stuff to your phone that's expensive to run <laughs> and I, i'm pretty sure that they've said on financial calls that they break even on itunes even yeah. though they sell billions of songs and movies it's like they break even they that's not what they're making their money on they make their money on the thing and the, they have that whole ecosystem as an incentive for you to buy it. So, and I think both of those strategies can can sit side by side harmoniously in this market. I think that there is room for both of them, and it is now Amazon and Apple against everyone. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, and I think that uh, I think they'll win. I think they'll win as long as Amazon doesn't start cutting into Apple territory. I think that they will they'll they could even have a relationship with each other. <laughs> oh, oh, wouldn't that be sweet? Oh, you, oh. Apple and Amazon. Apple's on. So as we uh, gently cross our hour mark. Coast over. I think we should discuss some films. We should discuss film. So I, I, this, I think this is a, a general rule. If we're, uh, we're going to talk about a structured movie... We should get that at the end, Sean, because it's October. Um, it is October. October. Holy crap. October 1st. You should expect that these, uh, that these episodes will be over the hour mark. If we don't, like last week, it, it, will, it will be under the hour mark. That's my... That's the plan. That's the plan. Stan. So we got two movies to talk about. Um, we, got, we got the final Harry Potter installment. Full disclosure, I didn't want Do to we, talk Carter? about it anyway. <laughs> I Do didn't we? talk about Deathly Hallows Part One, even though I heard, I we'll I'll talk we'll talk about it in a minute. But I think we want to briefly talk about a movie that we both saw um, last last weekend, which we mentioned on the podcast last week because we both, even though we hadn't discussed it previously, we both wanted to see it really bad. And that is. Moneyball. So you- Aaron Sorkin writes a good script. So, can I tell you something? <laughs> um, I didn't know that Aaron Sorkin did the script. I wanted to see it for totally different reasons. And I said during the movie to the person I was with, like, man, some of these lines seem like Aaron Sorkin lines. And then the movie ended and it was written by Aaron Sorkin. I'm like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was written by Aaron Sorkin and then another guy did, I guess, rewrites or something. 
but yeah, I mean, it felt it felt like an Aaron Sorkin film. Yeah, and it was directed by Bennett Miller, who uh, previously directed Capote, which was fantastic. Yeah, I kind of I almost expected uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's part to be bigger just because of their previous working relationship, but he really wasn't in it that much. Yeah, and w- one thing I found confusing just about the plot uh, was f- I got the impression, maybe wrongly, from the previews in the trailer and from the way that the script was unfolding that eventually philip seymour hoffman's character would be like a good guy or like someone who's working with billy bean and that never happened and i am like oh I, we're supposed to not like you <laughs> oh yeah 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 you know i'm like i i kind of wanted it i it was like i feel like i want to at some point for you to be nice and that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah to to set it up for anyone who either hasn't seen the previews or or has and doesn't understand it's it's a movie about a a guy who stumbles on a a strategy to managing a baseball team that no one had tried before that involves heavy use of statistics and logging and basically putting together a team of averages instead of a team of superstars one of the reasons why I really wanted to see this was that is like that is like my job. That's that's like what Carter does. That's what I do professionally. So. Do you wish you could manage a baseball team? I uh, who knows. Uh, <laughs> jo- Jonah Hill's character in the film is a is an economics student, and he it doesn't look like he really has that much interest in baseball. He just thinks he has a, a way of doing it better. And uh, that that could be you. That could be me. That could be me. Um, we don't talk about my work on here, but uh, if you're, uh, we'll leave that as a mystery. But if you Google my name, it's the first thing that comes up. <laughs> I noticed that earlier this week. So you can figure out what I do. Um, yeah, I was. I this was a fantastic movie. Oh, uh, I almost cursed. Fantastic movie. <laughs> really, really good. Um, I I think my favorite. Uh, element of it, which I think a lot of people's favorite element, is um, the relationship between uh, Billy Bean and his daughter. Yeah, that uh, um, <laughs> that song she was playing, I was deliberately, because I do this, I was looking for anachronisms almost the entire time, mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't really see any obvious ones, and she was singing that song, and afterwards I was like, was that an actual song? And Alicia was like, yeah, it was I've heard it before, and I was like, oh. And I looked it up, and that song is from 2008. It sure is. Lenka. So there's an, ac- an anachronism for you. <laughs> right. Well, and also, it's, it's, I, I think we're supposed to think that she wrote this song. and it's... I, That's why I asked, because right. I was like, that song sounds too good to just be hers. And yeah, it's not hers. Yeah. It's, from some, it's from some girl who lives in New Zealand. And then my second thought was that, well, maybe Billy Bean's daughter actually did write that song. But no, it's some girl from New Zealand. But, so uh, forget it. She got she got a nice little voice on her, and uh, very yes. very 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 good way to end the movie. A little tear jerky, um, if you are into that sort of thing. I uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, I loved their relationship. It was very real, and I thought it was very it was a uh, we've had a study in contrast these past two weeks between the relationship between Matt Damon and his daughter in Contagion, mm-hmm. and uh, Brad Pitt and his daughter in. Moneyball. I thought, um, I, 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 the girl in Contagion just didn't really grab me. Like, um, what does Billy Bean's daughter's name in this movie? I'm gonna I don't up. remember. I'm going to look it up. Um, and yeah, that Aaron Sorkin, boy, can he write a script. Um, <laughs> but I actually found out Tara? Or is that the mom? It's Tara or Casey? Whatever. I don't, I don't care. Um, there were a number of articles. Should I send them to you? I'll send sure. them to you. I'll you put, them I mean, the... put them in the show notes. You can read them, but show notes too. Um, about how the book and this movie is basically not at all how this happened in real life. Yeah, and yeah. Aaron Sorkin is notorious for changing real things to make a better story. And he was changing something that already was very biased in how it looked at the Oakland A's and Sabermetrics. Well, okay. You look at Shakespeare. How many of his stories are based on things that really happened? Sure. 
but he just completely changes them to make a better a better way of telling it for an audience. That's just the whole point of it, having a writer. Right. So I, I can't say I have a problem with Aaron Sorkin messing with reality. No, I don't. I don't at all. Um, there's some. There's something separate, though, with uh, um, the book and um, Michael Lewis, who had another Oscar-winning movie just last year, two years ago. He also wrote The Blind Side. Mm-hmm. So he's uh, he's 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 doing pretty well on the whole making money off of books thing. Um, apparently, <laughs> oh well, the Aaron Sorkin the biggest thing Aaron Sorkin changed was Peter Brand is not real. Right, Jonah Hill's character was invented. He was invented, and the whole Oakland A's doing poorly then adopting sabermetrics thing. That's not how it happened. <laughs> The previous general manager was also a proponent of sabermetrics, and Billy Bean continued that. And they just had a good year. <laughs> but it's so much more fun if, you know, it's implemented and you see immediate results. Exactly. Precisely. Um, and it was. And it was what? more fun. Um, Michael Lewis and Billy Bean, on the other hand, have sort of... The book focuses on things it wants to focus on, and in it tells a story it's not just about sabermetrics and objective truth <laughs> so a, a lot of people um have said they completely ignored the pitching um in the oakland a's performance that year and in subsequent years and that um the uh, the other two pitchers not just the relief pitcher chad uh, mm-hmm. What's his the name? one who pitched Goofy. The one who the one who like his drags his hand on the ground when he pitches. Apparently, yeah, that, yeah. he does that in real life too. Apparently, I, yeah, he he he, he throws Goofy. Um, they had as much or or even much larger role in um, getting the Oakland A's to where they were than Chad. Uh, what's his name? Or the rest of the team that Billy Bean built. Yeah. They had great defense that year. And it's like that had, sabermetrics didn't have anything to do with that. So made for a good movie though. You think, uh, think it's going to be up for uh, best picture. It, yeah. 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 I think so. As long as they keep the categories the way they do, or the way they say that they're going to. <laughs> yeah. Did we talk about that? The funky way, the new election system. Yeah. I, we, we were mentioning, um, the Emmys, uh, way back when. I don't think we talked about the Oscars. No. So yeah, you know how the, you know how this new system is going to work. It's not the it, ten anymore either. It's. It could be ten, right? Could be as many as ten. But they have to pass a threshold. Right. A threshold that would have kept some films out recently. Like, like the Blind Side, which. Like the Blind was, Side. Uh, that, that's how I knew this whole voting for ten things was out. out like, nope. The Blind Side is up for Best Picture. Either, no. I saw the movie. It was fine. It was nowhere in the running for that. <laughs> um, I think so too. I think so. Too. So yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, pro- original or uh, adapted screenplay. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we're near the end of the year at this point. And uh, I mean, so here's a question. I don't. I don't know if this has ever happened before. Brad Pitt is obviously going to be nominated for an Oscar this year because of either this movie or um, what's the one where he was the dad did really well in the film um, on the film in the film festivals. I don't know. Uh, it also had <laughs> Tree of Life. Tree of Life. Tree of Life. You didn't see? No. No. Sean Penn. Um, and Brad, I didn't see it either, but it's like it, it's doing it's doing very well. People liked it a lot. It won the oh, Palm man. won the Palm Door this year. Why am I not paying any attention? Yeah, I I'm gonna try and see it on DVD. Um, yeah, I mean, it won it can. That's pretty. It's, it's gonna be nominated. It's probably gonna be nominated for Best Picture. And Brad Pitt apparently gave a just knockout performance in it. Um, do you, could could is this a is it? A, I don't know the rules. Could he be nominated for both of these? Um, yes, I think so. Yeah, I don't know. That'll be interesting. Um, I think it's theoretically possible, but I think um, the 
I think the voters will keep it from happening by picking one. Right. If, and if I were if I were them, I haven't seen True Life, but I would probably I would probably pick this one. The bigger budget, or they they seem to favor. They seem to favor the ones them. that audiences actually saw. Yes. Yes. Um. Yeah. And what do you think of Jonah Hill? I, I thought he was really great. I really like Jonah Hill when he can actually act. Yeah, he was very convincingly awkward. Yes, that was the perfect, like, you see Jonah Hill in a Judd Apatow production or whatever, and you get that version of Jonah Hill that you are familiar with. But when he wants to actually play a different character, he really can. Totally. He seems to be able to embody other form, other walks of life. I uh, this will this will this is gonna be this is good this this is a good move for him. This will, he could. This is good. <laughs> um, have you seen pictures of him? Recent pictures of him? Yes, he's startlingly startlingly thin. He's tiny, man. I he was already short, so if he lost sixty pounds or whatever, he basically just disappeared. Yeah, he's now the average height and build of a. Uh, I was going to say something that people could interpret as being racist, so I'm not going to say it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Um, I would say, if you're going to see... I, go see Moneyball. Um, if you had to choose between Contagion and Moneyball, go see Moneyball. Moneyball won't terrify you. No. No, it won't. Um, it will... It'll do something to your heart. <laughs> Okay, well, speaking of doing something to, to to our hearts, I watched Harry Potter. I watched a Korean movie from 2002. <laughs> <laughs> On my recommendation, like, months ago. Yes. Sean and I were talking about this, not on a podcast, I don't think. Um, we were just chatting uh, about a Korean horror movie called A Tale of Two Sisters. And I had a free two hours, two and a half hours this week. And I could have watched Deathly Hallows. I could have. And I chose not to. I, 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 and I think I, I, everyone has to make those types of choices in their life. And it's, it can be painful, but I think I made the right decision. It was very good, by the way. It is very good. If you're, if you're into horror, A Tale of Two Sisters was remade into an American movie called the something. Un, the Uninvited. The Uninvited. And I have not seen The Uninvited, but I know from the wiki that The Uninvited changes the ending of the movie. Really? And it changes it in a way that if I were a fan of the original movie, which I am, I would hate. Really? Yes, and we'll talk about it later. <laughs> <gasps> Maybe we'll talk... Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so before we do Harry Potter, um, we got to talk about this next month. We, we promised we were going to do this, and I think this is a good place to start. We're going to do some horror movies this month, since it is the... The month that ends in All Hallows Eve and Halloween. Yeah. So, what do you think about this as a project? Uh, a Tale of Two Sisters is available on Netflix streaming. I, I didn't know that. That's great. So, I say we should talk about A Tale of Two Sisters. Sure. Uh, and I would recommend it to anyone. If It's a scary-ass movie. If you... It's not scary like, you know... This is this isn't like you know the new Nightmare on Elm Street film. This is like getting your head, you know, pour fire in your soul, scary. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not trying to like, I, I'm not trying to be hyperbolic, but it is very scary. This is, and keep that in mind. If you're young, keep, keep the lights on. Yes, if you're if you're young and you listen to us. And, you know, you kind of like horror movies and you haven't seen many of them. This is probably not a good place to start. <laughs> no. Uh, no. It, and not only that, but Asian horror is very different from American horror. It is very different. And also, well, uh, I don't want to spoil this, but, you know, it's like, it's a horror movie, but it's also like a psychological get in your head, sort of. Yeah. And there's there's stuff that they want you to think about. Other than just terrifying you. Right. Um, I, I looked up here. The Uninvited is not on streaming. So I was thinking a project might be go watch A Tale of Two Sisters. And maybe you will also, the two of us maybe will watch uh, Uninvited and say what we think about it. Um, 
but if it's not on streaming, I'm probably not going to watch it. Yeah. Well, there's another movie that's not going to be on streaming that I would like to watch, and that is Kevin Smith's Red State. Ooh, that's going to be on the plate. That's going to be on the plate for this. So uh, that's available on iTunes. Yes. And it's, I think it's even available on, like, uh, Comcast Video On Demand and stuff. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's put it everywhere that he can get it. It was um, recently reviewed on my favorite horror movie podcast, Bloody Good Horror. What did they think? Um, I'm not going to say. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have our opinions. We'll get I'm there. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, I'm going to check here real quick. The Uninvited. Uninvited. If it's available on iTunes. If it's available on iTunes, I'll watch it. If it's not, I'm not going to. It is not. Wow. I don't think. It must is. be caught up in licensing. It is. It is. Oh, it is? Sorry. 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 It is. So... Uh, it's available for three ninety nine, which is pretty high um, for the rentals on here. But I'll watch it. I will. I will lay down that cold hard cash for the good of the podcast. <laughs> John, uh, if you if you want to watch, it, uh, you you do the Netflix DVDs, don't you? Yeah, I still I still have it. You mean Quickster? Quickster. <laughs> That's right. Because um, I want to see I want to see what they monkeyed around with. But yes reason why i will have more theoretical things to say or not much to say about the Alice part one is because i watched a tale of two sisters i think i used my time wisely yeah so um so yeah we want to do a tale of two sisters next next week to start off the sean and carter have a horror cast have a have a horror cast <laughs> yeah yeah that's fine i will be prepared cool um i'll watch it again seriously guys it's really scary don't look under the sink <laughs> You'll never look at sinks the same way. <laughs> so, marry. how much how much can we cover of Harry Potter? Whatever you want. I mean, I, I so the, the the biggest thing, the first thing I wanted to mention about Deathly Hallows Part One, the riskiest thing that David Yates did in any of these movies was the Tale of the Three Brothers, Hermione. Pulling us out of the live action and suddenly we're in an animated sequence. Yeah, that that's like a master level risk, right? You know, it's like that's not something like Pixar would do, you know, like a like a safe but great movie movie shop. Uh Pixar Pixar would never do like and now we're going to have like some photorealistic portion of a Pixar movie, you know, like um, like Tom Hanks in that what's the movie? Polar Express, you know, something like that. Or, like, now we're going to have a live-action part. Or, you know... Um, they did do that. They did? Yeah, you see Wally? That wasn't photorealistic. They had Fred Willard in the movie. Oh, man, you're right. But that's not a risk. <laughs> <laughs> what, for, because it's Fred Willard? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think it's the same level of risk. That's true. That's sort of true. But I don't think it's... Boom! Sean hits Carter. God. Sideswiped. I, I'm i defeated. <laughs> um, I, I will just say that I don't think that's the same level of risk. No, I mean, Harry Potter, I, you went seven films without... Well, six films without doing something like that, and then all of a sudden, there it is. Right. And it wasn't, like, integrated into... It wasn't some sort of risk that was integrated into the rest of the framework of the movie it's like we're gonna go look at an animated thing now <laughs> um and well I any talks or i think they pulled it off. i think that i was i remember when i first saw it i was floored i'm like this is awesome yeah i n- not only was it uh interesting to break up what a lot of people considered a slow movie with that but uh the style of that portion was awesome the art direction on that short was really good. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Her, and uh, doesn't doesn't hurt one bit that Emma Watson tells a good story. <laughs> um, I wonder if she's doing any narrating in her spare time. No, oh, maybe. Um, so yeah, I that is the like my single like whoa why if, if I'm gonna have someone watch this I'll be like oh and really pay like pay, pay special attention to this part because I think it's really something to talk about the rest of the movie it's pretty slow <laughs> Not a lot it is slow movie. and i mean it's it, it almost feels like i i really should 
I should have waited and tried to watch both movies at once and seen what it felt like then, because I think it would be a completely different experience if you could just take a 10 minute intermission after the first film and then watch the second film. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Um, Cause this one, I, I sort of have the feeling like, you know, you're walking, you're walking along a bridge and then it just like suddenly stops you know, to the end here. You know, but like it basically ends after um, the death eater attack. Uh, right. And it's like, there should be more happening. <laughs> it's kind of a, a, it's kind of an ambiguous ending because people are, well, one person is dead and no one knows exactly. And you know, that Voldemort's got every means of, of terror at his disposal all of a sudden. Not good times in the Harry Potter world. Not good times. And uh, spoilers. Spoiler. <laughs> Dobby dies. Dobby dies, and it's really heartbreaking. Although they missed their opportunity, and they made this choice, knowing J.K. Rowling told them Dobby's important, and I, she might have even gone so far as to be like, Dobby is going to die in the last book, like way back when they were making the first movies. She's like, mm-hmm. he's important. Okay, so. Don't cut him. Don't cut him, and they did. And I think that it takes a lot away from his death. Because he was in all the books leading up yeah. to this one. All of them. Yeah, you got to know him and his girlfriend. <laughs> his drunk, or whatever. His drunk-ass girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they 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 cut a lot of him. Yeah. So I think that that does take a little bit away from this. But, you know, if you read the books, you, you, you probably like it. You have, you know, you have affection toward him. And it, it, it's not easy to watch him today. Uh, and also, <laughs> torture, Hermione. That was very, a very disturbing. Ugh. Yeah, that uh, another one of those moments that you don't really want your eight-year-old watching that movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any movie with Helena Bonham Carter, I guess, except for Alice in Wonderland. Right. Right. Um, she's a weird lady. Um. <laughs> you gotta be weird to be married to Tim Burton. Right. They're married. Yes. I didn't know that. They've been married for years. I just thought that they did movies. No, they're married. Okay. All right. I hit you with the truth. Sean's throwing truth bombs. <laughs> Pixar uses live action. Helena's married to Tim Burton. What what will be next? Um you know what I would struggle to tell someone about this movie? Like, what happens in this movie? It's It captures more of a feeling than it does <laughs> showing plot. Right. Like, in, the, in, the, in part two, it's like, you know, they break into Gringotts, and then they, you know, they fly to Hogwarts, and then they, like, marshal the troops, and then they, you know, they have a battle, and then... You know, and then Harry confronts Voldemort, and then... They... Part two is the third act yeah. of, the, of the book. It's like stuff, there's like, look at all this stuff happening. And this one, it's like, people are kind of scared, generally. People are hiding. <laughs> people are hiding. People and, are running. And, you know, they're looking for Horcruxes, and there's a locket. And, and Ron's really, really angry. Ron's super angry, and Harry and... Hermione get all sexy with each other in his mind. <laughs> um, get to see a lot of get to see a lot of naked uh, naked Daniel Radcliffe in this one. He kind of looks like a creepy doll when he steps out of that fog cloud. They like they, it looks like they airbrushed his face, his CGI face. And there's a creepy doll. <laughs> it's always watching you we have not talked about jonathan colton enough on this podcast you know jonathan colton uh participates in a podcast on five by five i did not know that he several times has been on the one with merlin man called back to work um to uh, to say that not a lot happens in this movie that isn't to say that i don't like this movie i did um but not in the same way that i liked part two and not in the same way that you liked Half Blood Prince. No, that's probably my second favorite after after Azkaban. Yeah, I really liked Half Blood Prince. 
it was one of those it was one of those things that like when I was watching it hadn't seen it in a while and I'm like oh man this was really good <laughs> that was exactly what happened to me like good job nice um yeah yeah uh, yeah and the reason we can't cover part two for next week is because it's not out it's not on happening. we can't find it it's not happening uh, it was still playing at a local theater up until last weekend around here, and now it's gone. And who knows when it'll be out on DVD. I'm sure in time for Christmas. Probably. Almost certainly. Um, it'll so, probably be like December 21st. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know about that. Um, and we have covered part two uh, in previous previous podcasts. First two-ish? Or the, or the second and the third? Yeah. Something yeah. Like Way back there. We had a pen. You know, I, I would like to see it again sometime just so I'm not, you know, awash in emotions. <laughs> and I can look <laughs> more clearly. Uh, but it, I, I would say that I, 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 enjoy, I enjoyed it a lot more than, um, than this one. But I didn't dislike this one. And I, we mentioned this before. Very, very interesting color choices uh, in this one. It looks like it's almost like a black and white movie it's, at, at times. Yeah, those those forests are very gray. It is. And dark. maybe that's just England. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, poor England. <laughs> um, yeah. That was one thing that they didn't get to in in Half Blood the Prince or in this that uh they didn't explain it, but uh that I always really liked from the books that England is basically under fog in these final two books because of all the dementors and their Oh, that's right. I think that I think it's I think it's that they're breeding. <laughs> oh, oh. Ew. Uh, and there are like, they're just like out and terrorizing people. And it's causing all this fog, which is in these movies. There's like fog everywhere and it's very dark, but yeah, it's because the dementors are dementing. Creepy. Creepy. So that, yeah, I, that's the end of Harry Potter. That's it. That's it, man. Until they remake the films in 20 years or whatever. She's going to write more books. Don't worry. Okay. I got the inside info on this one. Oh, good. Yeah. Joe and I talk. I didn't know. Do you have your own podcast? <laughs> yeah. You haven't been listening? <laughs> Joe and Carter have a podcast. <laughs> and you stole the name? <laughs> yeah. Um, the awful name? Yeah, it's a fine name. Um, but, yes, that's the end of end of end of the Harry Potter, and now we'll go into the of uh, we'll go into October with scary movies. Horror October. Scary movie, guys. Tale of Two Sisters. Seriously, watch during the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watch it during the day with someone else. With someone else that Have you can grab. Buddy system. Man, if I saw, oh, I love horror movies so much. I love feeling scared and and anxiety. Probably doesn't say anything good about me as a person, but. Um, oh man, if I had seen this in the theater, especially like at night with not a lot of people, oh, this would have freaked me out. <laughs> All right. So, uh, anything else? I think we're done. I think we're done. I think we made up for the short podcast last week. Yeah. Maybe we'll have a, a, a medium one. Ah, man, there's going to be a lot to say about Tale of Two Sisters, especially if we, if we do this uninvited thing. Oh, man, I can't believe they made changes. I'm almost... Yeah, I guess now that you're going to watch it, I should just not tell you. Don't tell Yeah, don't tell me. Don't tell I, me. I won't tell you, and I'll just see what you think. Yeah, yeah, we'll I mean, get the... It's not like you'll miss the change, because it basically changes the entire plot. Mm. <laughs> it was perfect the way it was. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. And we'll talk about it next week. Sean and Carter had a podcast. I'm Sean. I'm Carter. <laughs>